Today I've got some Halloween familiars. We're doing black cats. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. So the first project is our Cat Sisters Makeover. I got this little thrifted wooden kitty cat duo. Very cute. It's got a little broken tail, but that's okay. This is a little pumpkin. It's just a little plastic pumpkin. I'm gonna have some black and orange paint. I do not use that orange paint, by the way. I decided to use this pumpkin paint instead in the chalk paint. Some paint brushes. Protect your surface for this because we're gonna be painting these kitties black. We're giving it a Halloween makeover. I'm just gonna shake up my paint, put a little down here, and then start brushing it on. I like a flat brush because I feel like I can really get in all those little cracks and those little tight spaces. So since this has a hole in it, I'm just gonna put a stick in the bottom to help me hold it while I am painting it. That way I won't get quite as much paint on my hands. I always somehow or other always end up with paint all over myself. I even found some on my arm the other day. No idea how it got there. So I'm just going to put this paint, I know you can't see, but I'm just going to put this paint all over and since it's a little bit thicker, I'm just going to go up and down with the, uh, you know, the stripes of the pumpkin. After it's dry, I'm going to go back over the eyes with some jet black paint. If it's easier for you, go ahead and just use a permanent marker or an acrylic marker for this. Um, this would have been very difficult for me if I didn't have my magnifier glasses on. Ladies, I'm almost 50, so yes, I do use them, and they are very helpful when crafting. So you might want to get you a pair just to have when you're crafting. So here are the kitties, nice and dark. I'm going to get a little bit of Mod Podge and put on the eyes of the largest kitty because his eyes are open. So I'm just going to paint right on the raised area. I'm not going to put it down in the space around it because we want his eyes to glow. So I'm going to add some glitter to the eyes. Well, it's a she. We're going to call it a she because these are going to be sisters. So here's some glitter. This is kind of a fine glitter and it's black and just, I just reminded me of Halloween when I saw it. I'm just going to dot some on and then shake it off. And this is how it will look. And then when it dries, the um, you won't see the Mod Podge underneath. So all you'll see is the beautiful color from that glitter. We're going to do the pumpkin like that as well. I'm just taking a little brush, using my pinky finger to steady my hand there. And I'm going to go all over the black area with this. And the nose also. And I just use my finger when I get out of the lines. I just use my finger to wipe that off. So, you know, it makes it easier. You want to keep going. Don't get too frustrated when you craft. It's supposed to be something that is fun and that brings you joy. And if it's getting annoying or aggravating or tedious, you just need to get up and walk away for a little while. Maybe go out on the porch, take a break, and then come back in and get back to it. So I'm sprinkling that on again. And then tapping it off and this is how the little pumpkin is gonna look and I think it's it's cute love that glitter and I'm not generally a glitter kind of person but gotta have it during the holidays right all right so now I'm just gonna take a little bit of my antiquing wax and go over the little stem area here I didn't want to do green so I'm just going to try to darken it just a little and then using a, um, a paper towel, I'm just going to kind of dot some of it back off. Now I'm going to put a little embellishment around the kitty's neck and I have a little bit left of my orange rickrack. I'm almost out and I'm so sad because I've got so many more crafts I want to do with it. Hopefully I can find some more when I'm thrifting. And I'm just going to wrap these two around together. I'm not trying to make them look like they are um, connected and you may think with it wrapped this way that it'll look like that, but we're going to do something to definitely show that it is two different pieces. 
I wish you could see more of the detail on these cats. It's just really hard with the color of the paint and my lighting in the basement to really show the detail. All right, so this is some old velvety ribbon. I'm going to cut it into pieces and make some little bows so that each kitty cat has their own bow. And this will make it kind of look like that's not one piece, you know, like it's a little collar or a little necklace, but it's not just one piece that it's actually two individual little collars. So it's a simple bow that I do on lots of things. I think everybody knows how to make this bow. And again, I'll show you how to do it again. Easy peasy. And then pulling on the, the, um, the parts that hang down is going to give you how long or short your little strings are going to be or the tails are going to be and you can adjust your loops of your bow by just pulling on those so i'm going to make them small and the one that goes on the little littler the smaller kitten is going to be just a little bit smaller and i'm going to do it off slightly to the side now see doesn't that look like two different ones i have these cute little pom-poms and I'm gonna add those to each of the kitty's little collars. It's not quite the color orange. It's more of a apricot or peachy color, but I think it works. I think it'll be okay. Aren't they sweet? Okay, so now we wanna give them a pumpkin. I'm just going to um, Put this down and see where it's going to fit the best because there are some dips and depressions in the little statue so i want to make sure that the pumpkin kind of nestles in there so that's what i'm doing i'm looking to see if there's enough area that's touching the two items together so that the glue will hold them and it won't fall apart and i have more area over here on this side so this is where i'm going to put it and you can see that I've marked it a little bit with the chalk paint from the pumpkin. That was totally accidental, but it worked perfectly, so I knew where to put my glue. And I'll stand it up so that I make sure that everything is flat when it's displayed. And this is how the kitties will look. Aren't they sweet? I love them. You can follow me on my social media. The next project is a cat boo shelf sitter. Okay, I'm going to have some jet black paint, some orange paint, some red paint. This cat that came from the thrift store, I have no idea if it's old or not this also came from the thrift store and then I got some crafting thick cardboard paper stuff um foam board if you will I, I don't like the foam board I'm gonna tell you that I did it because I had already started and I didn't have another cat but I do not recommend foam board for this project go ahead and just use regular poster board all you really need is something that will give this cut out some strength and structure because he will be standing up in this project and yeah you don't want to you don't want to do this but you can see how I do it because you can use the same technique so I put my podge down first put the cat down and put more my podge on we're going to use a base also forgot to show it to you so there it was those signs come from the Dollar Tree and they're really good to use for projects I'm going to mix my own paint here by adding some orange and some red together and then a little bit of chalk paint. I am trying to get the orangey red that is around the outside of the cat. He's trimmed in that color, so I was trying my best to match that color. And I think I came pretty darn close, if I must say so myself. So I'm going to take one pumpkin and the B and paint the front this orange color. I'm going to go all the way over. And I gave them two coats each. I had some little clumps. You just see me digging them out with the paintbrush. Tell them my paint's getting old. But that's all you have to do if that happens. Just brush it out, wipe it off, keep on moving. 
No excuses to stop crafting, people. We just keep going. We just power through it. Okay, so we're going to do the front of the B also. And I'm going to get on the inside of the letter B, but not the outside. And I'm also not going on the outside of the pumpkin with the orange. So the pumpkin that we didn't paint the front of, we're going to paint that outside orange. This will make sense to you soon. This looks like something that came from either Michael's or Hobby Lobby or maybe Joann's. So you might can find them there um, or something similar anyway. So you can do it the same way. All you want really is the word boo. And I'm going to go all the way around the edges with that. Then the first two that we painted, I'm going to take the black and very carefully go around the outside. I'm using a smaller brush here because I don't want the black to overlap onto my orange. So I'm just placing the brush down and kind of dragging it. There are some ridges in this MDF or whatever this stuff is that I'm painting on. So I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing, obviously, but just take your time with it so you don't have any overlapping. Now on the one that has the painted sides but not painted on the front, <laughs> I hope you're with me, y'all. You're going to use a piece of paper of your choice that's coordinating. This is very old paper that I've had forever. And you're going to turn your pumpkin over, trace it, and then cut it out. We're going to Mod Podge this down. I'm just going to use a brush here, a little foam brush, and just go all over the pumpkin to the edges with the Mod Podge. Not too much Mod Podge or you will get bubbles. The paper will get soaked and it'll make a mess. So just go sparingly, enough to stick it down but not have it swimming. And then I'm going to use my little squeegee here and just press it all down. Press it, press it, press it all the way down to the edges and push a little bit harder to the edges so that it really gets every bubble, every possible air bubble out of there. And then I'm going to take the the brush and go back over it on the top to lock it in and then we will let that dry. So that black paint that we used before, we're going to use it on here. Let it dry. In the meantime, I'm going to fight with the cat. So I'm using a crafting knife here and cutting it out. I'm going to cut the biggest pieces away from it first, all the bulky stuff. And then I will go back in and do all the fussy cutting. And I mean to tell you, I was fussing while I was cutting. This was a lot of work. But here she is in all of her glory. I'm going to use an emery board. And I'm going to just file down where you can see the foam that's hanging out and looking rough. File down as much as I can, carefully. And then I'm going to take some black paint and I'm going to go over all of the white foam and board that is underneath. This is going to give it such a better edge and finish. It's just going to look so much better. You can see it's already starting to look better. I'm trying not to overlap it onto my red trim there or my orangey red trim. But you see that color. That's the color that I was trying to imitate. It looks pretty close to the bee over there, I think. And be sure you protect your surfaces. So now we're going to go back to this one and work on it. I'm going to use my emery board and I'm going to file off my edges. This is going to make it nice and smooth and it is going to be perfect. You can use a sanding block, sanding paper, a finger sander, whatever you have for this. You see how bright that is? We're going to darken that up in just a minute. So I'm going to take some antiquing wax on a baby wipe and we're going to go over those orange, uh, the pumpkin and the letter all around the edges with this. This is going to give it kind of a, that blurred out look, that old look. Um, you know, the, the point of the antiquing wax is to give it an antique look. So it's going to age it. And that's what I like and what I want for this vintage project because I think it looks very much like what's going on with the cat. I'm going to go around the B and do the same thing. Go all around my edges and also be sure to get like on the inside of the letter any place that it would be needing some extra shadow and interest. 
and they look so much better. And then I'm going to bring down that white color by just using that same wipe that I've already been using and just kind of go over it. And you can see it automatically darkens it up a little bit. And I like that. And then the same technique we're going to use on the edge of this one. Where we sheared it off, we're going to go over it and then go up as high as you would like on your projects. Keep on layering as much as you like. I always like to start off with the least amount and then I begin to, you know, get it a little bit darker, add some little spots and such so that I don't go overboard first off. Looks good. Shout out y'all. 18,000 subscriber giveaway right now. It's time to treat you. Read the instructions and be sure that you comment Black Cat in the comments for a chance to win a box of goodies. Okay, you can see here how I've glued the kitty down. I put a block behind his foot, colored it black, and glued it to the base. I took the bee and the two pumpkins and glued them down toward the back of this black base. And then up here on the top, you can see that I glued the kitty's hand right there on the bee. I'm going to flip it over here and show you. This is how it looks from the back. He's glued in place here. You can see where the letters are glued right along the back side here. Just to give you an idea of the spacing. And then his little paw is glued up here from the back. You can't even see it from the front, can you? Now, to embellish this little kitty cat, He's got three little dots on him that look like where he might be needing hinges. Kind of like the little hinges you see in the little cutouts that you can move their arms up and down. Has those little round things on them. So I decided to use these bronze little push pins or upholstery pins. Cut them off. Cut the little pokey part off. And then I'm going to use them over those shoulder and the leg. But this little spot on the back didn't make sense to me. So I'm just using a dark furniture repair marker to kind of add to that and pat it, kind of blend it in so it's not as noticeable. Then I'm going to use my Fix All Adhesive so I don't burn my fingers off trying to use the glue gun. I'm going to put a dot down and then I'm going to lay it on the top, press it down just a tad. And then up here on the shoulder, I'll do the same thing. I'm just kind of swirling off the tip of it so I don't get a string of it across my project. Then let it dry, and this is how it is going to look. Oh, she's a beaut. She's a beaut, Clark. She's a beaut. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 Central Standard Time. Admission is free. Now we have a cat hanging sign. Another fun cat. I'm going to use some black spray paint, some little spider rings, a little strip of, I don't know what this is, but it's a ribbon that's got, looks like fur on it, and a thrifted cat head. And this is a wooden cat. So I'm going to spray paint, and then this is how she's going to look. I'm going to protect my fingers because we're going to be gluing this little furry looking fringe all over the border of this cat. I'm just going to go along the outside to do it. Adding some hot glue. You might want to have cool temperature glue here. Or protect all your fingertips because for some odd reason I like to put my fingers down that are not protected. I don't know why I do that. Okay, so now I'm going to Continue around, just adding the glue, and then pulling and laying down this trim. It fits nicely on the edge of the sign, so this was actually a pretty quick process. Just making sure that I was careful not to burn myself. Now, every time y'all watch my videos, you're going to be watching me put the wrong finger down in the glue, aren't you? Mm-hmm. That's okay. When I watch, when I edit my videos, I wonder sometimes what in the world I was thinking. So I'm going to continue around and just add it and then pat it down in there. Look how cute she is. I cut the ring and the legs off the spiders 
and I'm going to add those to the center of the eye. And since the little cat eyes are kind of oval, I just put them at this angle instead of doing them straight up and down. So it matches the shape of the, the eye in general. Oh, I like that. That is cute. We had the purple rings and the orange, but I think the orange are just the perfect ones. I have some yarn from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to use that as a cord. I thought it fitting because it's kind of fuzzy. And I'm going to tie double knots in each end to use as a hanger. Just sliding one knot on top of the other knot to make it bigger so we have a bigger surface area to apply the glue. And then right on the inside area of the ear where the head connects, I'm just going to add some hot glue and press it down into there. It's very fibrous, so it really, it, uh, really clings to that quite well. And then I can trim off the excess because we don't need that. It'll make it look nice and neat. Now I'm going to make a bow with pipe cleaners. I've never done this before, but I love the pattern and I wanted to use it. So just check out how I do it. This is going to be so easy and I'll be doing this lots more. So you see I made that little loop there and then I just took the back leg and wrapped it around the middle. Let's do that again. We're going to make the little awareness shape, press it down in the middle. Now it looks like a bow, but it's still loose. See how it's loose? We're going to grab it, wrap that leg around the middle, and now we have a bow. I love it. I love that. I love it. I hope this is helpful to you and that you'll be able to do these little bows now too. So maybe if you're out of ribbon but you really have some pipe cleaners that are gorgeous, go ahead and use them. It gives really interesting look and texture to the project. We're going to put this bow down on the bottom, but you can put it wherever you want if you happen to be doing a project that is similar to this. I'm going to place one on top of the other. And it almost looks like a little four-leaf clover. You can just use your wire cutters to trim it instead of using scissors on ribbon. So you can adjust things just like with ribbon. Then I'm going to glue my little bow down there toward the bottom of the kitty. Oh, she's a little stinker. Look at that face. I hope you like this kitty cat sign. Now here are our projects. Our little sisters, how cute they are with their jack-o'-lantern can see that the Mod Podge is dry. All you see is the glitter. I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Here's our boo sign, which I would also love for you to share. I think it's pretty unique. If you've enjoyed the content in this video, I would love a thumbs up. It means so very much to me that you guys keep coming back to my channel to watch the crafts that I create. Remember to comment Black Cat in the comments for a chance to win a box of goodies. For this particular box of goodies, it is going to be full of crafting supplies, meaning the tools that you need to get your crafts done. So be sure that you enter. Read the directions carefully too. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.